Tonight, the nation's second-ranked team invades Atlanta, putting its ACC leadership on the line, playing outside the Commonwealth in a true road game for the first time this season as the Virginia Cavaliers come to Midtown and look at these crazies at McCabe's Pavilion here in Atlanta. Second rank UVA and the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to our coverage of ACC basketball. Bob Rathbun, Corey Alexander with you. And of course, Virginia is known far and wide for its defense. And tonight, for the final time as a collegian, Isaiah Wilkins gets to play in his hometown one final time. And I'm sure Isaiah Wilkins is looking forward to coming here and trying to get a win in his hometown, as you mentioned. But in my opinion, he's the most valuable player, especially on this Virginia defense where they're so special, leading the team in rebounds, blocks, and steals. But more importantly, he's actually giving them a post presence on the opposite end and leading this team very well. And for the Yellow Jackets, Josh Okoge has been a godsend since coming back to the lineup. And Josh Okoge missing his first eight games, but since he's been back, only 18.8 .8 points per game and continues to play well, especially in McCamish Pavilion. Had 30 against a good defensive team against Miami, looking to have a strong performance here against the best defense in ACC in Virginia. The Yellow Jackets and the Cavaliers as we check our Carolina Ford keys to the game. And for Virginia, they have to make themselves at home. And reason being, they shoot the ball so well at the JPJ, that has to travel on the road. We know their defense will travel. And for Georgia Tech, they have to be, you see it, Bob, B-E-E, -E, the better D. They have to be a better defensive team than Virginia here on their home court if they want to get a win. You're so clever with your keys to the game. We've got the Yellow Jackets and the Cavaliers ready to have at it the rest of the starting lineups. And the opening tip-off for the Flats Midtown Atlanta for a big ACC game next. Everything has started to fall into play. 33 cumulative missed games by the Yellow Jackets this year. Josh Pastner is so excited to have a full complement of his players just so he can practice, let alone to be able to have a great rotation in the game. Well, we often talk about Virginia's defense, and why not? They are the nation's leader, but Georgia Tech is no slouch defensively. Especially when they have all their pieces together right now as far as conference play. They're actually second behind Virginia in all the defensive numbers. So this is a team that Josh Pastner relies on and thinks that they have a great chance of getting a win against a number two team in the country because of the way they can defend, especially here in their home court. And there you see Tony Bennett, the head coach of the Cavaliers, who's done such a masterful job. They've won eight straight ACC games. Only Purdue at nine straight has a longer conference winning streak than do the Cavaliers. And you got to give it up for Josh Pastner in his second year at Georgia Tech. His ball club last year and this five and one against ranked teams in this building. And one of the things you'll hear me say often in this broadcast, Josh Pastor told us last year, year two was going to be the most difficult year. In non-conference it was, but right now a three and one start in the ACC, Josh Pastor's liking what he's seeing from his team. His team at home with two ranked wins, one over Notre Dame and the other over Miami. We've got an all-star officiating crew lined up for you tonight. Roger Ayers, Mike Eads, and Ron Gruber to officiate. And it's going to be Mr. Ayers to toss it up. Salt wins the tip. And the Cavaliers have the game's first possession. 16-1 overall, 5-0 in the ACC. The Jackets 10-7 and 3-1 and and in the conference. And every time you watch Georgia Tech play, it's always interesting to see what defense they start out in a 1-3-1 to start this game. But Josh Pastor will probably go through 5-10 to 10 different defenses in this game alone. Shot clock at 7. Guy fires. Salt the offensive rebound. Gets it up. Off the rim. Lammers claims it. Yellow Jackets coming off a big win at Pitt over the weekend. You would expect a slow tempo game. Two tough defenses. Okogi coughs it up. Cavaliers have it. In the game's first turnover. Three guys on the deck. I think we'll see that often tonight. I'm sure we will. And you see the matchup. Isaiah Wilkins actually taking on Ben Lammers, although Lammers plays the center position. That's how much trust Tony Bennett has in Isaiah Wilkins to go out and shut down the team, other Georgia team's best player. Ball gets into the paint. An acrobatic reverse does not drop. And the Jackets have it coming the other way with Alvarado. And Alvarado actually picked up by Jack Salt. Georgia Tech not recognizing the mismatch there. They had an opportunity really to see if they could find a way to get to the rim with Jack Salt out of the perimeter. 
Gay at the high post. Alvarado whips it around. Here's a Kogi on the bounce, and Gay lays it in. Coming off a of season high 16 to 10, and a turnover, a steal for the Jackets. And now you're talking about a Virginia team that going into their game Sunday against NC State was leading the country with only nine turnovers a game. They had 15 in that game, and I know Tony Bennett not happy about seeing that early in this one. Alvarado misses the three. And salt rebound. Cavaliers looking to get on the big scoreboard with 17.45 to go in the first half. And Bob, this is one of those games where we're going to see a lot of possessions going close to that. Seeing that one and two on the shot clock. <laughs> Both these teams like to milk each possession and try to get a quality look. Cavaliers with a steal. Todd Jerome had the last basket. This one's rejected. Wilkins follows it in. And those are just the winning plays that Isaiah Wilkins makes. Not giving up on the play. And of course, Todd Jerome running up against some of the better shot blockers in the league when you think about Josh Okogie as a guard and then Ben Lammers in the post, but Wilkins just pursuing the basketball. Okogie works off the screen, now goes opposite to Alston. Lammers. Started by Wilkins. Cavaliers with it. As we mentioned, number two, but keep in mind, Virginia began the year unranked. The first time that a team has come from unranked to number two in a season in the ACC since Miami did it in 2013. Here's Wilkins on a back down. Off the double team, Okoye rips it away. Here's Alvarado. They set up a couple of screens for him. Ben Lammers, last year in the game in Charlottesville, had his hands full. Try to deal with Jack Salt. Yeah, absolutely. One of the things that Jack Salt loves to bring to the game is the physicality. But Ben Lambers with his ability to play on the perimeter drawing Isaiah Wilkins tonight. Tony Bennett doesn't want to allow him to get going. Okogi missing from the wing. And Ty Jerome the rebound. 4-2 Virginia. Lob to Salt. Catches, blocked, Lambert's got that one, and Ben comes down with it. And that's an area of concern for Virginia because when you load up on their guards, Jack Salt is going to be the guy that's open as we see another turnover for Georgia Tech. But Salt, unable to finish in there, especially going up against Ben Lambert's underneath the basket. But both these teams a little bit sloppy with the turnovers early. The big block shot by Kogi, but Wilkins, Johnny on the spot as Virginia leads 4-2. What time is CC Basketball is being brought to you by Food Lion, raising standards without raising prices. How refreshing. By New York Life, with the right guidance, everyone can be good at life. By Coyote Tractor. And by your local Toyota dealers. Toyota, let's go places. Welcome back to Atlanta. Do not be alarmed at the score here. This is the kind of push me, pull you game that we thought we'd see. Well, the fact that you thought people would be alarmed <laughs> at watching of these two teams at four to two after you know a little over four minutes being played is funny to me. But when you look at it, I think turnovers have been the story so far. But Georgia Tech already with three turnovers, and I know that's one of the things that Josh Pastor is telling this team against this defense. You can't afford to give away opportunities. The one time that they were able to execute their offense, they were able to get an easy bucket. But of course, that's been the only one time in the first four minutes of this game. Virginia, as you mentioned, have turned it over three times, and they're second in the country in turnovers, fewest turns in a game, and Tech not bad at 12.5. And I think right now we're seeing the third defense by Georgia Tech already in this game. This is called triangle, somewhat of a zone, but Josh Pastor has some tricks up his sleeves, but we've definitely seen a number of blocks already in this one. Wilkins, blocked by Lambert. That's the fourth block that we've seen from Georgia Tech. This is no place for the timid in that paint. Well, Ben Lammers, you know, third in the ACC, averaging three block shots per game. And you see he continues to be dominant defensively in the post. Big Ben was credited with four blocks already. Back 
back of the iron and over the glass for Gay. Counted on to supply that D, and of course uh, the offense would be a bonus. We mentioned the 16 that he had at Pitt. Coming in, Tyler Jackson for Georgia Tech, and he might be an offensive game changer coming in off that bench. And that's what he's been, averaging 13 points per game off the bench this year. For Josh Batson, one of the top bench producers last year, but he normally is instant offense, especially in this building. And I know as a senior, he's looking to have a big game, wants to get another opportunity to upset a top-ranked team, as Georgia Tech did so many times last year in this building. So much for Josh Pastor and the Jackets last year built, built on energy and enthusiasm in this building. And no shortage of energy early for the Jackets, particularly here in that painted area. Driving, Jerome floats it home. Ty nice. Jerome second basket. And a nice play there by Jerome, really seeing Alvarado playing him one direction and finding his way to the rim. Of course, seeing Ben Lammers, he had to throw a little floater up there to make sure he got the bucket. Freshman Alvarado to the wing of Jackson. Gay doubled. Runs out of it. Five seconds on the shot clock for Jackson. Over four minutes scoring draw for Georgia Tech already in this one. That's one, in my opinion, I think Todd Jackson, especially just coming in off the bench with six seconds remaining on the shot clock, probably should try to put his head down and make a play at the rim in comparison to shooting a three, which kind of bails out the Virginia defense. Guy underneath, shovels, Wilkins. Out of that double, open on the wing, and a wide left to try by Kyle Guy. To give Gay a lot of credit for getting out there and, and challenging that shot. Jackson getting it up there. Rebound fought for, and it's going to be claimed by Wilkins and the Cavaliers. Hey, you talked about the scoring drought, but the good news is you're only down by four. <laughs> that, that, it, that is the silver lining in the dark cloud that's been hovering above the basket so far for Georgia Tech. Virginia not playing great offensively, but their defense giving no room for Georgia Tech to see any easy looks. Rising up and shooting it long is Devin Hall. Just not an easy shot to be had out there. No, it really hasn't been at all for both these teams. We mentioned in the open how good defensively both of them were. We see Lammers probably going to get free throws on that one as Diakite was beaten on that back screen. Great recognition there by Alvarado to try to get Ben Lambert an easy one at the rim. Nigel Johnson coming in for the Cavs. Also coming in, DeAndre Hunter. And Diakite getting that first foul. Now, Bob, this is where you really have to pay attention to Virginia. We talk about their defense. But when Isaiah Wilkins leaves the floor, we'll see are there easier opportunities for Georgia Tech to be able to score. Wilkins at 6'7", is in the top five in blocks in Virginia history as we see another unforced turnover by Georgia Tech. I'm not sure what Todrick Jackson was thinking. Someone touched that basketball or whatever, but he pulled his hands away from it as if his player didn't throw it. That's the fourth turnover for the home team. Georgia Tech's last field goal came at the 18-22 mark, their only field goal. And Diakite shot an air ball in the last possession. He caught the ball in definitely a scorable position. And nice. nice Show and go by Hunter. Yeah, and DeAndre Hunter gives them a different dimension in playing the four position now where he played primarily at the three early in the season. But gives him a guy that can make that shot right around the free throw line, but also, as you see, put the ball on the floor and make plays at the rim. Eight to two, Cavaliers. Jackson, Lammers. So far, Tech has not looked inside with the absence of Wilkins. A little pick and roll action here as Jackson puts it up and off. Gay with a couple of tips. Cavaliers claim it. And there is seemingly a lid on that thing right now for Georgia Tech. But he also, you see Georgia Tech looks a little bit timid on the offensive end of the floor. And Josh Pastor talked to us about that earlier today in shoot around where he just said it's demoralizing when you go through those stretches and you can't make a basket. It does make teams timid, but they have to fight through that here in this game. That's the one thing about playing Virginia. Corey, you know this. Like this drive here by Alvarado giving it to Gay. You've got to go in there determined. You've got to go with a purpose. You cannot be apprehensive. Absolutely. And Virginia really just getting the job done on the defensive end. But DeAndre Hunter bringing the spark to the offense. 
first round draft pick for car insurance and we're watching Virginia's defense and getting an opportunity to actually see them play pick and roll defense not just once but twice on the same possession and just as well you see Isaiah Wilkins getting out showing on that screen giving no room for the guards of Virginia Tech to be able to make a pass out of that double team but then you see a different coverage for Virginia DeAndre Hunter never shows on the play allows Kyle God to be able to defend and the defense behind them, Ty Jero stepping in, making sure there's no room for penetration on this play as Devin Hall comes up with a steal, turns into points on the other end of the floor. Getting an opportunity to see just some of the numbers on Virginia's defense, Bob. Tony Bennett's teams have led the nation in scoring defense five times, including four times in the last five years. And tonight, if you turn it over against Virginia, that's like punting on first down. <laughs> it is, and, and Georgia Tech already with five turnovers in this game and Bob Virginia only shooting 26 and a half percent from the field and they're doubling up Georgia Tech right now a crazy start to this one turning shooting Lammers right there to deny and the Jackets try to get a look in transition and that's one Josh Okoge has Kyle Guy no one behind him there are times where you're going to actually have to force some action to see if you can get a shot without having to play against five guys in blue the key today, defending Lammers in the pivot, turns, hooks, short, tapped out. The Jackets, one of nine from the field. Backdoor cut, and the jam for Okogi. So the lid smashed open. <laughs> well, sometimes that's the way you got to do it, Bob. If the... If it's not going in with touch, you got to just force it through there. Great look from Ben Lambert to a Kogi underneath. Guy from the corner. Carries a three. Kyle Guy. That's just a defensive breakdown by Georgia Tech. I watched Josh Bastard's team go over that time and time again and shoot around this morning, and they've got to be able to identify when Kyle Guy gets an opportunity, especially along the perimeter. They have to run him off that three-point line. 45 for center outside the arc. Here's Alston driving and draws the contact. Region foul charge to Nigel Johnson. And we get an opportunity to see just how easy Georgia Tech was able to get that basket. Kyle Guy jumping the screen. Josh Okoge taking advantage of that going back door. And Ben Lambers with the great vision to find Okoge. But this is one of those games, Bob, we've seen Okoge really just take over games here in this building, especially against ranked teams. We saw what he did last year against Florida State where he went for 36. Didn't have a great game when they beat Notre Dame here last year, but he did have the game winner. So this is a guy that, you know, now in his sophomore year, he has to be very assertive on the offensive end of the floor, especially if they want to be able to beat a team that's as good defensively as Virginia. The Akite out, Jack Salt back in. Brandon Alston, whose parents met at UVA Law School. Puts in the second free throw. I'm going to go as far as to say that's a pretty smart couple. <laughs> the 11 5 game. Just under 10 to play, first half. Middle of that zone for Hunter. And honestly, not challenge Lambert. Yeah, Hunter had a good look from the jumper right there where he really needed to take that jump shot because it's difficult as he scored that one. It's a nice shot, but it's difficult to score against Ben Lambert and on those type of plays. And but he's more than capable of knocking down that 15 footer at the free throw line. 13 5 Virginia. Josh Kogi in trouble, lost the dribble, and it's going to belong to Virginia. For Georgia Tech, Todrick Jackson back in. Josh Pastor looking for anything that he can get, get. Get some offense going before this thing gets away from you. You know, Virginia's not going to put up huge points, but every basket that they make and you have to come back, they tighten that defense up more and more. It makes it extremely difficult to get back in the game. You cannot allow Virginia to get way out ahead of you. Hits the brakes, gives it back out to Kyle Guy. Jerome will launch the rainbow three. Rebounded by Hunter, and a jump ball. The arrow gives it to Tech. 
And Hunter is shaken up. Holding his face. See what happened inside. Well, nice offensive rebound by Hunter as he covers a lot of distance to be able to grab this one out of the air. But Ben Lammers, we've talked about it before, the long arm of the law. He gets the hands on the basketball there. But Man, as he comes down, right he does there, get, yeah, yeah, get with the left hand. In the eye. So an official stoppage here as there's a cut there just beneath the eyebrow. So DeAndre Hunter, redshirt freshman from Philadelphia, coming to the bench. And he will come out of the game, and Isaiah Wilkins will come in. The one thing that you do not get against Virginia, by and large, easy baskets. And when you've got to come down here and try to manufacture possession after possession, that's why teams run into such difficulty. Can you turn over Virginia? Can you get something in transition? Is there anything on the backside with a lob or something? Try to find some way to get something going at the basket. And, Bob, you talked about the numbers before. This could be the fifth year that Tony Bennett-led teams have led the country in scoring defense. If there was something to be figured out, it would have been figured that out by right. now <laughs> because it, there is no secret to cracking this defense. Time and time again, you look at it, the personnel changes, but it remains the same. And the one time in the last five years that they have not been number one, they were number two. So, I mean, again, it wasn't much fall off two seasons ago when they finished second nationally in scoring defense. The foul was charged to Kyle Guy. Right down to 8.25 to go in the first half, a 13-5 game. Mid floor, Jose Alvarado, Brooklyn freshman. Shot clock at five, Alvarado. Wilkins rebounds. And that's another area. Virginia doesn't give up many offensive rebounds, so you're pretty much one and done most of the times when you come down. They don't give you those second chance opportunities. Johnson. Here's Jackson. And the left hand runner is good. And that's going to have to be the answer for Todrick Jackson. Hasn't shot the three extremely well this season, but he's shooting over 56% on his two point field goals. A lot of that has to do with the fact his ability to get to the rim and finish over bigger players. 13 7. Paul oh, hooks it over to Wilkins. The pump fake. And then Jackson with the hammer to deny the lay-in. We have a timeout, 727. Opening half in Atlanta. Cavaliers on top. What time is it? Watching the ACC Network, an exclusive production of Raycom Sports. Also streaming live now on the ACC.com and on the official ACC mobile app. Our coverage of ACC basketball is being broadcast on AFM, the American Forces Network, as we welcome the nearly one million men and women of the U.S. Army, Air Force, Navy, Coast Guard, and Marines stationed around the globe in 175 countries and out on the high seas. So proud to have you with us tonight and hope that you're enjoying our broadcast from Atlanta, GA, where it has been frigid, my man. You call this cold? Are you kidding me? Whoa. You are spoiled, it has my man. Been <laughs> some, like an ice box. Hey. I made two trips to Syracuse and one to South Bend so far this year. So this, this is so. What are you saying? <laughs> I didn't wear a coat in the game today. <laughs> <laughs> we have thinner blood down here, <laughs> south of the Mason Dixon. 13 cents. Two free throws. Isaiah missing it. A big night. We talked about his homecoming. Ton of family and friends to watch him play tonight. They asked him before the game. He said between 30 and 40, he didn't have a a true count. But I know there are some proud people there watching here, watching this young man play. And you and I have talked about him, of course, off the air a lot. This is one of the best young men that you will ever have an opportunity to meet and come across playing in this game. It's just a pleasure to be around and talk to. Isaiah went to Greater Atlanta Christian High School, two-time state champion, playing for Eddie Martin. 14-7. Cavaliers with a one-touchdown lead. The little flutter on the baseline is good, and... You know, we identified Mr. Jackson as somebody that can create some offense, 
you've got to take that first good look you get. You really do, and you cannot be tentative against this Virginia defense. Georgia Tech was that way early, but it seems they've gotten a, a, little, a little bit of a rhythm here on their last few possessions. Top of the key for Wilkins. And it looks like right now Ben Lambert is going to dare Wilkins to make that shot. Isaiah is capable of knocking that down, but it's different, Bob, when you have to come into an opposing team's gym and make those shots. Isaiah shot extremely well against NC State on Sunday, even knocked down a three and a free throw for the four-point play. But shots are a little different when you don't get as many reps up in the building. Alvarado with the shot clock at seven. Jackson working, shooting, and in and out online. Rebound Alvarado and a rare offensive rebound for the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. Lambert's up and in. First bucket for Ben. He's got six blocks in tonight's game. 14-11 UVA. Now with the Jackets in double figures and a couple of buckets, the crowd's becoming a factor. Jerome trying to turn the corner. Shot clock at five. Knocked away by Alvarado. You know, and give Georgia Tech's defense credit. They have done a great job against Virginia. Their offense has hampered them quite a bit here in this first half. But they've done the job against Virginia. Only one three-pointer made for Virginia, and that's where they have a lot of success on the offensive end of the floor. Josh Bachelor's team doing a very good job making Virginia beat them inside that three-point arc. Virginia shooting 26%. Kyle got to the corner, fires an air ball into the lap of Ben Lambert. Jackets looking, a three ball ties it. Jackson. Josh Kogi moves in. Lambert's fighting for it, great save. It comes out front, back into Lambert. He'll rifle that baby to the corner and Jackson's rainbow three is no good. On the lead, Hall leaking out and laying it in. Devin Hall's first two. And give Devin Hall credit. He actually was the player in the corner defending Todrick Jackson on the three-pointer. Just outran everyone on both teams to get the easy look. High post for Lambert. And a steal by Jerome. Controls the dribble. Takes the bump. Lays it in. Timeout, Georgia Tech. 18-11, UVA. And Virginia doesn't get many fast break points, but you see Devin Hall just out sprinting everyone. Ty Jerome with the nice find to Devin Hall for the easy layup. And then another lazy pass from Georgia Tech gives Ty Jerome the steal. And just like that, four fast break points for Virginia. Not something that they do often, but they take advantage of when they get opportunities to increase some separation because this was a three-point game before those two plays back-to-back. -back. And Jackson missed the three in the corner that would have tied the game. 18-11. Coming up on the Hardy's Halftime Report. Highlights, stats, ACC news and notes. We'll bring you up to date as our midweek games unfold all that coming up the Hardys have time for food. so odd a Wednesday night of January and no games last night and that is you know what it wasn't odd until you just mentioned it I didn't even think about it but you know you know why everybody was saving it because they knew you were gonna be on air tonight <laughs> see if it, the next. if it was Wednesday you probably couldn't have made it here's Jackson up and in Jackson. all right Bob I'm gonna go here Todd Jackson needs to stop shooting threes and shoot everything in the paint because he's not missing when he's in attack mode going to the paint. Hasn't made a three-pointer yet. But he is getting the job done offensively for Georgia Tech when he's attacking that rim. 18-13 Virginia. Hunter planted that pivot foot. Nice spin move. Nice move there by Hunter. And really to be able to use that right hand to avoid the shot blocker, Ben Lammers, who already has six block shots in this game. But DeAndre Hunter has had success playing against Lammers in tight quarters. Ben against Wilkins. Pulls it back. Now screens as Okogie. They work it around to the corner. The three ball is good. Boy, what a great shot in the arm for, for Georgia Tech. It's 20 to 16. And it came off of a great ball reversal right there. Joshua Koki reversing the basketball off the screen and roll. 
And one of the things that Georgia Tech worked on today was trying to take advantage of Virginia's aggressiveness and the way they guard the screen and roll. That time it worked out perfectly. Wilkins, jump stop, and a travel. So the Virginia Cavaliers going inside, a strong post move by DeAndre Hunter. And then to the opposite end of the floor, Curtis Haywood letting it fly, 20 to 16. The ACC three-point challenge is presented by Mellow Mushroom. You can download that in your app store and play your favorite ACC team. And we brought out the big talent to show you how this works. Corey Alexander. Look at the follow-through, Bob. Look at the follow-through. You bricked it. I just said look oh, at the follow-through. I didn't say look at me <laughs> making shots. <laughs> we have had our version of global warming. Georgia Tech has hit six of their last ten. Virginia's hit five of their last ten. And at this point, Georgia Tech actually is now shooting better from the field than Virginia is, 36.8 to 34.6. Neither one of these teams lighting the world on fire, but the seven turnovers for Georgia Tech really has been the thing that's hampered them. And when you look at it, Virginia with six fast break points compared to the two for Georgia Tech is the difference in the game right now. Georgia Tech averages 12 and a half turnovers per game. Four-point difference. Lammers. Wilkins on him. Okogi scored only two, and that was on a dunk earlier. Jackson inside. Denied. On the push, Devin Hall. And that's going to be a blocking foul on Okogi. And Josh Pastor right on top of that one. He wanted the offensive foul on that play. Be interesting to see if Devin Hall's right arm goes out. If that right arm goes out, I'm not sure. That's a play that normally has been called an offensive foul when you he didn't extend it. I'll take that back because he didn't extend that arm from the other angle, looked as though he did, but did not extend that arm. So great call right there. But normally when players are extending that arm, it's been a pretty much an automatic all season long. Sky Jerome, the sophomore, turning. Gets to the foul line. Now Wilkins. Isaiah protects, kicks Jerome. One second on the shot clock. And the Cavaliers will have just that one tick left here on the out of bounds. Virginia stacks it on the out of bounds and Jerome to play it in. Here it comes. Shot clock violation. Shot clock violation. And we've seen now two shot clock violations for Virginia. And this is something that, you know, Virginia fans are used to seeing and celebrating when they're getting shot clock violations on the opposing team. But Tony Bennett's team hasn't really had the struggles with that this year. But I think this may be, outside of West Virginia, the best defensive team that they've faced thus far in their schedule. Okogi across to Jackson. Quickly inside, Lambers draws a lot of defensive attention. The big fella splits the defenders and draws the foul. The foul charge to Isaiah Wilkins, his first. And now, the problem with this is the fact that Ben Lambers was able to get through that double team for Virginia. The post trap is one of the staples of Tony Bennett's defense. And when they put that post trap on, that post player is not supposed to be able to go anywhere but out, away toward the three-point line. But that time, Lambert's actually been able to make a play. Doesn't make the first free throw, but does pick up a foul on Wilkins. And it looked like the foul actually was in the trip it as was, he tried it, to it go was, through. It was definitely in the lower body. You see and Wilkins actually trying to move his legs to get over there, but an empty possession from the standpoint of Lambert's missing two free throws. Boy, you cannot, if you're Georgia Tech, give away any points at that foul line. And they have missed three free throws tonight. Hunter. Again, short clock. Kyle Guy with a runner off the window. And that's a nice play by Kyle Guy. 
He knows that teams are going to do everything they can to force him off that three-point line. And he continues to develop as a basketball player. And putting the ball on the floor, making himself dangerous going to the basket, his game is going to grow by leaps and bounds. And a travel on Jackson. Boy, a lot of contact as Devin Hall was getting in his defensive stance. But you see Alvarado giving Kyle Guy no room to get that three. But Kyle Guy, who was a little bigger than Alvarado, is an opportunity to be able to get to the rim. And Todd Jackson going back to the bench for the second time with Man. blood. He just came in with a huge Band-Aid on. And this time going back to the bench with Todd Jackson. has been extremely aggressive on the offensive end of the floor today. You could Boy. see some blood from a guy like that. It's been three yards and a cloud of dust in his <laughs> first half. 22-16, guy firing a three. Too long. And Rebound Kyle, comes to Georgia Tech. Guy forced him not to get an offensive foul on that one. He actually went with the old Reggie Miller leg yes. kick. And that's one where you know, a couple years ago they put in the game, they can actually call the offensive foul on that possession. Lob into Gay, and this is going to be out of bounds to Virginia. If there's one area in this game where Georgia Tech has shot themselves in the foot is with the turnovers. They continue to give away opportunities to put points on the board. It's already difficult to do that against Virginia. You can't give the basketball away. 22-16, final minute. First half from McCamish. Second-ranked team of the country, UVA. Jerome on the bounce. Wilkins fires and connects. Isaiah Wilkins. He's got five. That's a shot that he's going to have to take and going to have to make to keep defenses honest and keep them putting so much attention on these guards. On the handoff, Ben Lammers controlling the dribble. Haywood back to Lammers. They work the triangle here on the near side. Haywood fires and hits at the three. That's his second three pointer. It's a guy who's at 42% of his threes this year, the freshman from Oklahoma City. 24-19. Hunter in the corner. Foul and a chance for a four-point play. The foul is on Gay. That's a huge bucket for Virginia. DeAndre Hunter with the concentration to finish that three and absorb the contact. Over in the corner, big mistake by Gay, allowing Virginia to stretch that lead going into halftime. Hunter had only two against the Wolfpack last weekend that ended a run of three straight and double figures. He's got double figures tonight. That's his 10th point. 28-19. And at the buzzer, the heat is wide, and it is halftime in Atlanta. So Virginia with a late four-point play from DeAndre Hunter, stretches the lead out to nine here at the break. Number two, Virginia, 28, and the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets, 19. ACC basketball is being brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. Toyota, let's go places. By Hardy. By Progressive Insurance and by Mellow Mushroom, out of this world pizza. Welcome back in College Basketball Live, sitting here with a few ACC coaches. There's one first-time head coach in this group, David Padgett. When, when some assistants, most assistants, get a head coaching job, it happens in April. You got yours in October. How would you assess the challenges of getting your team ready for the season in the preseason? I don't know if we have enough time to talk about the challenges <laughs> we face, but uh, you know, the good news about the team I inherited, uh, we have a, a very good mix of older players who've played college basketball, seniors, juniors, even a sophomore and VJ King, and we have a very talented freshman class. Obviously they're freshmen, there's a lot they need to learn and go through, and there's no easy way to get freshman experience except to let them go through it. But our older guys have been tremendous in trying to help the younger guys and get ready for the season. So. Just each practice, we're just trying to get better than we were the day before. You had a little more lead time when you stepped over from an assistant to replacing John Calipari there at, at Memphis. What advice would you, would you give him stepping in, although the time frame is a little bit different? No, David's going to do a great job, and he's a basketball guy, and his dad was a really good coach as well, too, and, and so he's going to do great. And 
um, you know, they're, they're good. Their team's really good. And, you know, following, you know, with Coach Patino and, you know, when I took over at Memphis following Couch, uh, Coach Calipari, it's just they're hard to do because, you know, the success that you're following in those – in both guys. So you just – do the best you can. It was a primary head coaching job there at Memphis. You're just getting started. Mike, reflect on, on what, what it was. You're at the pinnacle now, the coaching in the ACC. Reflect to your first head coaching job when you slid into that chair and had that ownership. Maybe an overwhelming feeling? What was that like? I think it was. I remember my first year at the University of Delaware in 1995. I, I wasn't very trusting of delegating. I tried to do everything and a little too much. I've learned to delegate more. But I think the biggest thing is you try to be yourself. You know, you've worked for a guy. You've been with a head coach. I think to develop your own identity and be yourself, as soon as you can get confident doing that's going to be helpful. Jim? What was yeah, that like? my, my first head coaching job was at a Division II school called American International College in Springfield, Massachusetts. And um, recruiting there was very, very difficult. But we spotted a young man I thought could really turn our program around. His name is Rick Carlisle. And we tried to recruit <laughs> Rick Carlisle to a Division II school. <laughs> Two years later, I was the assistant at Virginia, and uh, Rick called me. He was playing at the University of Maine, and he transferred to Virginia Helped us get to the Final Four. Now has been in the NBA since 1984. So when you're looking at players and trying to build a program, you got to find good players. Rick was a good player. We just couldn't get him to AIC. Yeah, it doesn't matter where you are. You might be someplace soon that you can actually get him. Buzz, your, your first head coach. Yeah, what was I, that like? I remember it vividly. Uh, very honored, grateful, uh, bigger than any dream I'd ever had. Was very thankful that the University of New Orleans would hire me and uh, have felt that away every day over the last 11 years. Brad? Yeah, I was very blessed. Uh, I took over at uh, UNC Wilmington, having been an assistant there for eight years under a very good coach and Jerry Wainwright. So the program was in, in a great situation. We had good players coming back, a good foundation. We'd been to the tournament. And so really the, the ease of transition for me was, was much easier than most And that I, I already knew the league, I knew the university, uh, and Coach Wainwright had given me a ton of responsibility. So that really gave me a lot of confidence. You mentioned getting to uh, the NCAA tournament, and when you're at maybe a, a lower level or a mid-major school, it's getting to the tournament's a great accomplishment. When you're in the ACC, it's not just getting to the tournament, it's making a run. You could have a great year, maybe even win a championship in the league, but you don't get to the second weekend, and uh, it's almost forgettable in some fans' eyes. How do you guys self-assess when it comes to success relative to the NCAA tournament? tournament whether it's getting there or advancing deep well for me I mean I, I've tried to be better uh, just about your own personal success and what you define it as I think when I, my time at Memphis uh, I was just I was really unhealthy uh, mentally uh, and and just because I, I lived and died by every single game and I, I so when I came to Georgia Tech I tried to have a better perspective on things and and it's a work in progress uh, it's hard to get to the tournament. I mean, I thought we had a good year last year, and we finished 11th place in this league. And, I mean, so – and we had eight wins in the league. I don't know if we'll ever get eight wins again in this league. I mean, it's hard to do. And so, you know, if you, you just do the best you can. I've tried to be better about that and focusing on just doing the best you can and let the chips fall where they fall. Now, as, a, as a player, obviously, you want to get as deep as you can. What about as a coach? How do you – he said when he started out, he didn't have a healthy perspective. You're just starting out. What's your perspective? Well, I think – at Louisville, it's, it's just been long established that getting to the tournament, per se, isn't enough. I think making a deep run is, has come to be expected over the last 15, 16 years, and obviously we've had a lot of success. Now, I'm not going to put any pressure on myself or on my team to say, hey, we have to get to the Elite Eight or we have to get to the Final Four, because that's just not realistic. You know, Everything we've been going through, me as a first-time head coach, that wouldn't be fair to anybody. So we're just trying to have as good of a season as we can have, win as many games as we can have, kind of just break up into three segments. you got non-conference, you've got conference, and then postseason. So just take it one segment at a time. How does that change as you get deeper into your career? Because when we refer to you guys, how many Final Fours does he have? How many national championships? Well, that dynamic happened a little bit this year for us. We, The two previous years we've been to the Elite Eight, 
we get knocked out in the second round by a very good West Virginia team. But we got we finished in the top four of the regular season and got to the championship game of the ACC tournament. And so I was trying to tell our guys that, you know, we had a pretty good run and and even uh, it was even harder trying to explain that to my fans. But maybe they finally got it at the end of the day. <laughs> what about you, you made a deep run with George Mason. Now here you are at Miami. Yeah. Twenty years ago, I had an incredible opportunity to talk to the great John Wooden, who won 10 national championships. And he talked about one thing that you had to have to be successful as a coach. And he said, you have to have balance. You have to have the understanding of what your expectations are, maybe very different than what anybody else is. And you just have to have that balance in your life, balance with your team so that you're enjoying the journey. Not so much talking about, did you make the final four? So, uh, and that's the way we've tried to approach it. We just want to be the best we can be every season we're competing. Uh, last thing, Buzz, it's validation though, right? I mean, NCAA tournament, that's a, that's a thing you can sink your teeth into. I think it just depends on what validation and who you're wanting the validation from. Uh, not trying to be holier than now. I like playing in the NCAA tournament because that means I have an extended period of time with our players each day. And so whether we win, whether we get there, I think that's for other people to judge. I think my responsibility as a leader is to help them grow to be the best people they can be. And if that means we play a couple extra games, maybe that time period helps them even more. And Brad, you've had a taste of it there at Clemson. Yeah, yeah, we haven't been in a while. and certainly something that we want to get back to. Uh, you know, we talk a lot about, you know, playing in March with a chance to advance. That's kind of a phrase we use to, to, to kind of keep our momentum going. And I think it's something that you put – the NCAA tournament out there, it's not as easy at some programs. It's more, it's more of a challenge. And uh, certainly you analyze each team and, and just try to get better working on that with that, that thought in mind for us. Okay. Good perspective, guys. We'll wrap it up when we return. These guys have left uh, quite a mark on their teams. What about the, the digital footprint, social media? Get into that for a few minutes, guys. All right, let's start with your health. Yeah. You know, you're 70, and yeah. a lot of people want to ask, how, how much longer yeah. do you want to go? Do you want to ask that? Yeah, I'm going to no, ask that. Gonna I'm going to ask, ask you, right. how much longer do you want to go? Yeah, I want to. Uh, I didn't get my knee replaced to retire. Let's put it that way. So I'm 70 years old. I think I'm definitely younger at heart. Uh, I have the knowledge, though, of a 70-year-old who's coached for 42 years and has coached 11 years with the U.S. team. and. I still I think that's a, a good combination, especially at a great school. I want to make a difference. I'm enthusiastic. Come on, Kyle, I got you. Grayson Allen, when describing you, called you a friend. Yeah. Which is interesting for a 21-year-old to call a 70-year-old a friend. Right. How do you think you've been able to connect with players these days and change and, and be able to adapt? Well, I think it's up to the teacher to adapt so that his or her teachings are accepted easier by their pupils. I've had to adapt a lot. Not values, work ethic, and all that, but how you communicate, how you dress, what jokes you tell, do you stay current. Grayson Allen is a really good basketball player. He also appears to be a dirty basketball player. Well, his reputation for this precedes him. What gives you confidence that, that Grayson if you have confidence that Grayson has kind of gotten past the, the issues, the tripping issues, and he, and he Yeah, can... well, you know, it, it, look, there's a, it, is it more tripping issues or what everyone made of, of a couple ish, uh, issues? I want Grayson to be Grayson. Grayson's, a, I think, as good a player as there is in the country, and uh, I want him to be a leader, and I want him to not have a rear view mirror. How much did you worry about him last year, though, because of all the public outcry uh, and the attention that he got? How much were you worried that he'd yeah. be able to handle it all? You would have thought that there was a capital offense that had occurred. That's the attention, I think, that our program brings, the scrutiny. And, you know, you have to learn to live under that microscope. But he has had an opportunity to be in incredible situations where you don't play at the beginning of your freshman year you are the hero of the national championship game. You're an All-American as a sophomore and you have an incident and then that's unbelievably publicized. And then you have another situation and then you're hurt the whole year. Holy mackerel. 
He's lived a lifetime in those three years, and I, I think it'll all uh, end up you know, really, really good. How good can this team be? I mean, you have talent, you've got bigs. They're very different than a lot of your previous teams. Yeah, you know, our team is going to be very much a developing team. We have three guys in Marvin Bagley, Wendell Carter, and Marquise Bolden who are going to be pro players, maybe all three of them at the end of this year. We don't have the perimeter depth that we, you know, like the last few years, but we have more big guys. And so we have to adjust what we do, uh, and which we do every year. Is your outlook of recruiting one of that's changed? People think it has. No, no. I, you know, everyone talks about us changing our recruiting philosophy. That's, that, that's not the case, you know. It's just that Grand Hill was in the mid-90s or early 90s. If Grand Hill was today, he'd go too. But we would have still recruited Grand Hill. You know, Leitner and Batty A, and that's when it started for us with Elton Brand, but he was even here two years. I have not changed. The landscape has changed to where it would be the best decision for them to go, and then I'm okay with that. What time is it? Saturday prime time. H-Town put it down in the place to be. CP3, baby, the bomb PG. And it's clear that the beard is MVP. Seven seconds or less making it rain for three. Yes. Step PD and Clay, you built Iggy and Dre. Ain't no way that you're beating the band. The first game on a Saturday night. Let's see who walks away with the bracket right. Warriors, Rockets, Saturday at 8.30 on ABC. Presented by YouTube TV. Tuesday, it's Rock Chalk versus freshman Phenom. He has become the story of the early season. The kid is on another level. I would just like to see him play. I am just playing. In a sonic blockbuster. We got nothing to lose, got nothing to lose. This is what you call championship DNA right here. Number 10 Kansas takes on number 4 Oklahoma, Tuesday at 7 on ESPN. You know, at Sports Center, we like to stay current. And right now, user generated content is what's hot. So if you'd like me to read the next highlight, text 4464 to SC. Or if you want Jay to do it, you can text 4465. Or if you'd like to see Teddy, the roller skating cockatoo, dunk a basketball, text 4466. We're engaging with our fans in a whole new way. Basketball is being brought to you by Geico, saving people money for over 75 years. By Gatorade, win from within. By your Carolina Ford dealers. And by Bojangles, it's bow time. We welcome you back. The Virginia Cavaliers and the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets about to have at it here in the second half. Bob Rath and Corey Alexander, our ACC crew with you from the flats tonight. Josh Pastor's ball club is in this game thanks to their defense. But to win this game, they've got to solve somehow, get some easy shots against this very, very tough Virginia D. They have not, Virginia, allowed more than 65 points in an ACC game in 11 straight, spanning two seasons. That's the longest active streak of that kind in Division I basketball. Well, when you talk defensive numbers, I'm sure that Tony Bennett's teams are rewriting all the record books. I can't imagine a team over college basketball, and also when you think college basketball history, what program has dominated the defensive numbers over the span of the last six years, the way that Tony Bennett's coach teams have, I mean, you have to really think back. Crazy. And the teams that have, haven't done it with these, they've done it with a faster pace defense. The 40 minutes of hell from Nolan Richardson, the Amoeba defense from Jerry Tarkanian, but not to the level that Virginia's no, doing it. Not year after year like this. Tech makes a couple of changes. Haywood and Jackson start the second half. Salt does not start for Virginia. And we've got a bucket from Wilkins from the corner. That's a two. You know, I, I did Virginia's last game, and I was imploring Isaiah Wilkins to start shooting the jumper more often. And he told me before the game, I heard you, I heard you. And you see him getting an opportunity to knock down a number of good looks. A nice cut inside finds Todrick Jackson. That's the second time Virginia has had a miscommunication 
on that type of action from Georgia Tech. The first one was a Kogi for the dunk that broke that 750 drought in the first half. And then Todrick Jackson getting an easy basket on that. So I'm sure that's not something Tony Bennett happy about seeing. Jerome driving. This one died on the rim, but tipped up and in by DeAndre Hunter, who gets the start here in the second half ahead of Salt for the Cavs. And that's a major change because Virginia has had the same starting lineup every game this season. DeAndre Hunter, with a great performance in the first half, actually forcing Tony Bennett's hand to put him in the game earlier in the second half because he's been able to finish around the basket where Salt has struggled. Salt probably giving up four of those six block shots by Lammers early. Boy, good hands. Anticipation by Wilkins. 32-21 Cavaliers. And this is danger time. Even though it's early in the second half, it's danger time for Georgia Tech because you can't allow Virginia to continue to extend this lead. And they dodged the bullet there, giving Kyle Guy a good look at the three. Alvarado taking it down for the Jackets. Okogi has scored only two and has not hit a jumper tonight. But, Bob, we just saw Josh Okogi with DeAndre Hunter guarding him on the perimeter. And Okogi very tentative, and this time turns it over. Those are the that's a matchup that Okogi has to be able to take advantage of and win that battle. From the wing, Devin Hall. Wilkins, the offensive rebound. Four jackets around him. Jerome with the runner. Ty Jerome has scored eight, 34-21. Josh Pastner can't be happy about that. That's, a, that's way too easy for Ty Jerome. It was almost like playing at the park right there. He was at the top of the key by himself. Can the Jacket get this man going? And Okogi draws a whistle. Okogi is a guy who has averaged 21.8 points again against ranked teams in this building. Only two tonight. Hunter picking up his first foul. And you and I talked pregame about, you know, guys who could actually have big performances against Virginia. And I pointed at Josh Okogie and said, that's a guy, in my opinion, who can go out and put up numbers against this great Virginia defense. But Devin Hall, primarily the defender, taking on the challenge of guarding a guy like Josh Okogie and giving Okogie no room to breathe. Virginia played against NC State on Sunday. Al Freeman, their leading scorer, did not score. And Omir Yurt seven, who came in off of a career-high 29 against Clemson, only six points. So Virginia knows how to take away your number one option. Alvarado slips. And they get a whistle for the hell ball. Georgia Tech will hang on to it. Shot clock at six. 17-12 to play in the second hand. It's a pensive crowd here at McCamish. They want to explode, but it's been so tough for the Jackets to get anything going. Long three by Curtis Haywood. Boy, has he come to the meet and really excel. Three threes now for Haywood. And Haywood also doing also doing a very good job defensively on Kyle Gossel. Where would Georgia Tech be without the freshman right now? Wilkins with a pass inside. The Jackets swarm taken away. Alvarado looks around. Cavs excellent job in transition D. A 10 point spread. Okay, at the high post. Okogi gets the screen. Quick pass inside to Gay. Eight seconds, seven on the shot clock. And a loose ball. Heads up play by Alvarado to get it. Blocked and taken down by the Cavs and Wilkins. Jerome with a bounce outside. Kyle Gay. Guy has it and looks to make a move on Lambert. Tough shot to hit it. Kyle Guy with seven. That's a nice move by Kyle Guy. We've seen him now take the ball to the rim multiple times and able to finish that time with the left hand. 36 24 UVA. Kogi. They pound it inside. Double team. Chased out of the post. So Kogi will drive it. Can't finish. And a whistle. And I believe a foul has been charged to UVA as we come to a timeout. 
at 15-35. It's a second bounce on Isaiah Wilkins. Beautiful move by Kyle Guy, Cavs by a dozen. C are a click away. And one, big time. Customize your experience for scores, stats, highlights, and news. The ACC Mobile App, presented by Outback. Time to look at the nation's top 25, brought to you by the Honda dealers of the Carolinas. Duke number five, North Carolina number 15. Clemson hanging in at number 20, and Miami at number 25. Atop the heap, these Cavs at number two. Interesting in this game, for all the great defense, they do it, Corey, without fouling. Only seven fouls on Virginia, only three on Georgia Tech. And we've had just a handful of free throws in this game. Three for the Cavs, four for the Jackets, and Okogi going to the line right now. And that's one of the areas of concern for Georgia Tech because Josh Okogi gets to the free throw line more than anyone in the ACC. So for him to be shooting his first free throws of the game is something that Josh Pastner needs to make sure he gets to Okogi, that he has to be aggressively attacking the basket. I thought he's allowed players to guarding him to off the hook, to get off the hook a bit too easy in this game, but I'm looking to see if he's going to actually be in attack mode and be aggressive for the next 15 minutes. 80% free throw shooter. That's the UVA advantage to 10. Cavaliers starting a stretch of five games of their next seven on the road. They've had the best ACC road record over the last six years, 36 to 26. And the best ACC home record over the ACC oh, for the last six years. Goes without saying. <laughs> Lammers has it taken away. Jerome getting it back for the Cavs. Guy for three. Saw good hustle. That one squirts out to mid-floor. And the Jackets win the ball. Alvarado turns all around, goes to the basket, and Salt swats it away. That's 36-26. That's just an example. Virginia just flat out does not allow transition points. Even off of the scramble, <laughs> we Jack will Salt, hunt you down. <laughs> Jack Salt, who's always involved in the scramble, still sprinting back to come up with the block shot. And a body foul on Jackson. That will be his second. And we watch Salt <laughs> hits the deck, <laughs> pops up, and as Alvarado takes off, he's got number 33 in the rearview mirror. And Jack Salt, not his best night, struggled on the offensive end of the floor, trying to finish over Ben Lammers, but yet continues to give that effort. And that's the thing with this team, you know, this Virginia team, consistent effort, regardless as to whether shots are going in, plays are going their way, they're going to have that consistent effort. Tony Bennett knows he's going to get that from Jack Salt, as well as Devin Hall and Isaiah Wilkins, and that's a luxury to have as a coach when the one thing that you don't have to coach is effort. 38 to 26. Virginia reclaims that 12-point lead. Okogi. Had a look for Lammers, but didn't deliver the ball. Now Alston. Haywood, a Kogi at eight. Steps in. And this one is going to go out of bounds and belong to, you, to the uh, Cavaliers. And you like the attack by Kogi, but again, you have to be strong with the basketball. And, and people feel as though this pack line for Virginia allows you just to move the basketball around and just play. You have to be strong with the ball. They put a lot of pressure on the ball handler. They're often gaps when they don't have the basketball, but when it comes to the ball handler, they still put a lot of pressure on that player. Kyle Guy switched out against the big. Mouse in the house. Salt delivers it back. Kyle Guy steps back. Now Devin Hall, shot clock, runs out. If I can remember correctly, that's the third shot clock violation by Virginia. Now, I watched Devin Hall's eyes on that one. He saw that there was only three seconds on that shot clock. That's one, I mean, again, you have to be selfish enough just to get a shot up on the glass. That time he put Kyle Guy in a tough position. No way Kyle Guy had more than enough time to get that shot off. Hands off to Alvarado. Spins in. Tapped out. Haywood. Okogi. Josh has six. That's Josh Okogi's game. He's not a guy that is always going to look pretty, 
but he goes and gets the job done. If he's got to go get it off the glass, he'll do it. If he's got to drive it to the rim and get to the free throw line, he'll do it. And he's going to need to do it over the next 13 minutes if Georgia Tech wants a win here at home. Jerome into the paint. Back outside, Devin Hall. Look good on that three. He has hit 48% of his threes this season. 41 28 can and Devin Hall shooting the ball with so much confidence this year and you can see he's just grown up in this program really become a tremendous factor for a guy that redshirt as a freshman and plays sparingly as a, I'm sorry redshirt in his first year plays sparingly his fresh, redshirt freshman year and has been in the starting lineup ever since spin move loose ball flag down in the corner by Alston taken away by Kyle Guy on the steal and to win they go. Okogi measures, can't stop him. Kyle Guy lays it in. Timeout, Georgia Tech. The Cavaliers open it up to 15. And off the turnover. The Cavaliers. Kyle Guy taking it end to end. What time is it set? You're watching the ACC Network, an exclusive production of Raycom Sports, also streaming live now on the ACC.com and on the official ACC mobile app. We're back in Atlanta, and it's vote time, so that means we're checking the Bojangles fan of the game. Give me that face. I'm not sure if it's fair that he gets to win Bojangles fan of the game. Well, first off, let me ask. Why? Did you get anything from Bojangles for winning that? Because if not, I don't care. No, I mean, we can't, we cannot, we cannot violate their amateur status. Oh, there you go. So, <laughs> this, this, this apparently was yeah, our runner-up. That's up. not a win. 43-28. <laughs> Okogi. Blocks. Oh, what a defensive play by Hunter. Just outstanding. Perfect timing. Officials timeout. And we are going to have an official's timeout at the 12 minute mark. 43 28, Cavalier. What time is it? Saturday? Here in Atlanta, it's 43 28. The Wake Forest Demon Deacons back in the triangle after playing at Duke Saturday. They're in Raleigh tonight to meet NC State. And Omir, you're seven getting off to a good start for NC State with the finish. But you see Wake Forest attacking the basket. Doral Moore with the finish. Brian Crawford in transition, finding his way to the rim against the NC State defense. And then Mitchell Wilberkin just coming down easily at PNC Arena, making it at home, knocking down the three as those two teams are knotted up in a close one. And we'll keep you posted on the outcome, and we've got an update now. It's 57-54, NC State leading the Wake Forest Demon Deacon. Not as close here. Virginia's defense has really started to flex its muscle in the second half. Georgia Tech with more of the same problems, five second half turnovers, and that has allowed Virginia to continue to build into this lead, now up to 15 here with 12 minutes remaining in the second half. The Cavaliers have shot the ball well here in the second half. Six of ten. Tech nearly had the turnover, but Virginia gets it back. Shot clock continues to run at 13. And that's another area, Bob, and you're getting to see this Virginia team. They come up with the majority of the 50-50 balls. We've seen so many of them in this game. And when they get them, normally they turn them into points. We've seen that multiple times this game, and it's happened for this team all season long. Right now, they just have the basketball bouncing their direction. Push shot there for Kyle Guy to make it 45-28. Alston into Lambert. Ben overshoots the target. Cavaliers get it back. Lammers with those six first half blocks, but from the field only four shots and he's made one. Hey Bob, I'll give you a number. In Georgia Tech's last two combined games at the JPJ in Charlottesville, they have scored a combined 77 points. And right now, 
they're on pace to have another one of those high 30 games here against this Virginia defense. If they can't figure out something offensively, Virginia doing something they don't do often, which is turning the basketball over. But Georgia Tech just struggling to score. Last year in Charlottesville, Tech scored 49 in a 62-49 defeat. When they won here a couple of years ago over Virginia, they scored 68. This is a, it's hard, it's hard to get points against these guys, especially when you give away possessions. Step back, off the rim for Nigel Johnson. Jackson up the floor. Through three to Tucker's going to the left hand and lays it in. And if it's not going to be Okogi, then it needs to be Todrick Jackson. Josh Pastor has to find someone that's fearless enough really just to attack the paint of Virginia. You're not always going to score, but it's better to get a shot and an opportunity for offensive right. rebound than it is to turn the basketball over. And a blocking foul on the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets, a restricted area violation here. And the foul is on Brandon Alston. Number one on the junior. To the free throw line, DeAndre Hunter. Pleasant surprise tonight off the bench for Virginia with a dozen points. He is a 77% free throw shooter. Around the ACC is brought to you by Nicorette Minis, and this is the Saturday schedule. These jackets are quick turnaround. Ooh, Saturday at 2, they'll be in Chapel Hill to beat North Carolina. Florida State goes to Blacksburg. Notre Dame comes down to Clemson, and Pitt will be at Duke to try it again. They've already tasted the wrath of the Blue Devils in Pittsburgh this season. 46 to 30. Bob, you mentioned Brandon Austin earlier in the parents' meeting at UVA Law School. We actually have two players in this game that have both graduated from great academic institutions in three years. Well, Cody's three. And they are. One would be Austin, yep. who graduated from Lehigh and came to Georgia Tech with actually two years of eligibility remaining. And Devin Hall, who graduated from the University of Virginia in three years, and so is in his second year now of graduate school. Wow, hey! guy missing the three. Cavaliers up by 13. Jackson right there again. He's been the jacket that's been the most aggressive tonight. He really has, and that's the thing about Todrick Jackson. You and I, of course, have seen him for four years. He is fearless, could care less about the size of defenders at the rim. He's going to attack them. But this team needs Josh O'Connor to do the same. And waltzing right in, Nigel Johnson gets a lay-in. And that's not something that happens against this Georgia Tech defense often either. You don't get easy baskets against the Ramblin' Wreck, especially when you have momentum on your side. That was a big letdown right there to give just to be able to quiet the crowd. The crowd had gotten into this game. Alvarado's first basket. And just like that, they're back. It doesn't take long. That three ball will get you back in a hurry. Third, a 10 to 3 run over the last couple of minutes. Wilkins. Roderick Jackson, big head of steam. The whistle before the shot at a Tifton, Georgia, Tift County High School, 48 38. Alvarado pounding, looking, trying to find a crack in that defense. We're coming up on the eight-minute mark of the second half. Skip pass to Okogi. Drives it. Reverses it. You like the drive by Okogi, but that's a bucket that you have to get. You need to be able to finish, especially when you can penetrate the Virginia defense like that because you don't get many opportunities. Jerome and Okogi. Swats it down, but the foul goes against the Georgia Tech sophomore. His second timeout. 7.38 remaining in our second half. 48-38 Virginia. We'll be back after a word from your local ACC station. For five Duke, you'll have another chance to see Blue Devil sensational freshman Marvin Bagley who leads the conference in scoring, rebounding, and double-doubles. 
for the ACC Network game schedule, visit the ACCnetwork.tv. And remember that select ACC Network games are streamed live for free on the official ACC mobile app. Young Mr. Bagley, flat out doing it in Durham. Our game summary here, 15 turnovers magnified because you have so many fewer possessions in a game against Virginia. And the points in the paint, plus 12 for the Cavaliers. But you look at it, 12 points off of turnovers for Virginia, only two for Georgia Tech. That's a 10-point discrepancy in right now what just became an 11-point game. That has been the difference in this game. Georgia Tech not getting quality looks, as many quality looks as Virginia on the offensive end of the floor. Virginia with 10 more field goal attempts. Ty Jerome. Now 15 of 15 at the line this season. He's made 20 straight dating back to last year. So good, he avoids the broadcaster jinx at the foul line. 50-38 Virginia. That's because you waited. <laughs> Discretion, the better part of battle. Glamour out of a double team. And throws it right into the hands of Nigel Johnson. And that will be turnover number 16 for Georgia Tech. And it's not as though Virginia is a team that forces a lot of turnovers, but that post trap against quality bigs. When Tony Bennett puts that post trap on, it often does cause those big guys to throw it into the wrong team's, the wrong jersey for the opposing team. Todrick Jackson, guilty of his third foul. Side out of bounds. Uh, out of bounds underneath for Virginia. And before the pass in, we've got a hold on uh, Okogie and also a little pop to the face. So that will be the third on Josh. Devin Hall, a quiet seven after his 25 against the Wolfpack last weekend. Shot clock at seven. Jerome. Off the high glass and good. And that's Ty one Jerome. of the areas where Ty Jerome and Kyle Guy both do a very good job when they get into the paint. Neither one of these guys great athletes, but they do a really good job getting the ball high on the glass and taking advantage of their angles. Alvarado has to get it up to avoid the three-second violation and the Cavaliers rebound. And over the 40 minutes of this game, Corey, you are seeing the poise of a Virginia team. You talked about them coming on the road, leaving the Commonwealth for the first time since Brooklyn to play a road game, and they've acquitted themselves so well tonight. You just said there's no panic, even in the face of a, a raucous road crowd like this one. They control this baby right from the start. The one thing that, is, that has become very popular in Charlottesville, and it was a saying that I believe Tony Bennett said long ago, defense travels. And knowing that, knowing that they're always going to have a fighting chance when they come in the game because their defense is going to keep them in. And this will go off the leg of Hunter. Good hustle play by Kogi. 5.43 remaining. Shot clock is reduced to second to 29. As the Jackets, Robert Jackson plays it in. The Kobe is leaner. Cavaliers control it. The last ACC team to go unbeaten through the entire conference season on the road, the 2012 Duke Blue Devils. DeAndre Hunter. DeAndre Hunter. And a whistle. Foul against the Cavs, and this one on Devin Hall. Bob, this was just a 10-point game. I mean, we looked at it, it was 48-38. We talked about the 10-point difference in turnovers. And just like that, out of the timeout, Georgia Tech comes out. They turn it over a number of times. And this Virginia team, when you make mistakes against them, they make you pay for them. And as Virginia continues to build this lead, now 17, it's so difficult to make up ground on them. That's one of the reasons why you have to get off to a good start. You can't play from behind against this Virginia team because they, they've turned the ball over probably more in this game than they normally do. 
but they don't turn it over much. And then at the end of games, they're a great free throw shooting team. So it's difficult to play from behind and think you're going to mount a comeback against the Cavaliers. Points off turnovers, a big part of this one. The runner, no good, by Devin Hall. Jackson, and it stripped and went off his leg out of bounds. And who's right in the middle of that? Of course, Isaiah Wilkins. We talked about him at the open of our show. A homecoming game for Isaiah, and he's been very good. But of course, this Virginia team is a sum of all the parts. It's not about an individual. Is great chemistry, is sharing the basketball, and a coach that preaches defense as they get the job done together. The whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Timeout for Georgia Tech here, 56 to 40, is our score with 4:46 remaining. There is a common thread and a historical thread between these two. We take you back to the old Charlotte Coliseum, 1990 ACC Tournament Championship. Terry Hollins and Bobby Crummins, the coaches at Georgia Tech, defeated UVA 70 to 61. And what made this historic is the fact it was the first time that a North Carolina school was not involved in the championship game. Brian Oliver was the tournament MVP. And you see Coach Crummins getting a big hug for Brian. Kenny Anderson cutting down the nets. And the ACC championship, one of three in Georgia Tech history, the last coming in 1993. Now Georgia Tech going to try to apply some full court pressure, but just more of a token pressure to get back into that man to man. The one area where Virginia has had struggles is against full court pressure, but normally zone pressure. Syracuse was able to put a little pressure on them at the end of that game and turn them over a little bit. You've seen it throughout their, you know, Tony Bennett's tenure at times, but again, a team that doesn't turn the basketball over much and they make free throws, it makes it extremely difficult to come back. And then, of course, when they, when you, when they, you give them opportunities for second chance points or offensive rebounds, that doesn't help your call. by Hall. Plenty of clock here for the Cavs. A ball fake and drive by Jerome. Sets up Devin Hall. Jackson pulls the three ball. Georgia Tech tonight from outside the arc. 5 of 11. 56-40 Virginia. And right now Josh Passner applauding his team to stay the course. Just stay the course, continue to play. Right then, he told his team to shoot around today, regardless as to what the scoreboard says, as Devin Hall comes across the lane. And I was getting excited because I thought he was going to dunk that. I, was, <laughs> I actually wanted to see if he was going to try to dunk that. But, you know, Josh Pastor told his team, just go over the course, regardless of the scoreboard, let it take care of itself. Let's just go out here and make sure we get better in this game. Gay with the jam, 58-42. The Cavs will stay on the road. They play at Wake Forest on Sunday. Really going to find out a lot about this Virginia team throughout this stretch of the next seven games. Most likely will walk away with a win in this one. Johnson's lay-in, 18-point lead. But they do play, you know, five of the next seven on the road. And that's really going to be where you find out how good is this Virginia team. A third foul on Isaiah Wilkins. Tony Bennett in his ninth year in Virginia. Another defensive juggernaut. ACC basketball is being brought to you by Geico. Saving people money for over 75 years. By Food Lion. Raising standards without raising prices. How refreshing and by your local Chevy dealers. Virginia 60, Georgia Tech 42 with 2.37 left here at McCamish Pavilion. And looking inside that UVA huddle, another outstanding defensive effort. Our performance of the game brought to you by your local Chevy dealers. The Cavs 71 and 2 when holding the opposition under 50 and they got another shot at that to make it 72-2 and two here in the next 237. And, Bob, that's a number that the 
the fans at the JPJ are very aware of. I was there doing the game Saturday against NC State, and I believe NC State hit a three, like with five seconds left in the game, and to give them 51. And everybody was so upset that they gave up over 50 points. But right now, with two and a half minutes remaining in this one, Georgia Tech has a shot to get over 50. But I really don't think that's something that Tony Bennett cares about as long as his team gets a check mark in the win column. Especially on the road. Especially on the road. In this ACC where Virginia has a chance to go 2-0 and on the road, but it's been a struggle for pretty much everyone else in ACC play thus far. And riding on the hip of Ty Jerome is Alvarado, his first foul. Stops it with 2.30 to play. That is the sixth team foul on the Yellow Jackets. Well, Bob, I tell you, Ty Jerome has been a different player for Virginia since they got mm -hmm. into ACC play. Mm -hmm. He really struggled in the non-conference, had two good games before, right after Christmas coming into conference play. But his first game of the ACC this year, he had 31 points against Boston College at home. And I believe that just gave him a tremendous amount of confidence. And he's been playing very confident basketball ever since. And over these last nine or ten games, now he hasn't hit a three tonight, but he's been shooting the three ball well. He really has it. Virginia between Ty Jerome, Kyle Guy, and Devin Hall, probably, you know, the best shooting backcourt maybe in the country when you put all three of those guys together. I mean, Devin Hall alone is shooting 48%. And we know Kyle Guy right now is Virginia's career three-point percentage leader. Under two to play. Jackson with a step back. And a foul coming on Virginia here. Looks like it's on Wilkins. No, they're going to charge it to Ty Jerome. Well, they're going to be heavily favored at Wake. They'll be favored, of course, at home against Clemson. I think everybody in the conference, around the country for that matter, has got that January 27th game circled at Duke. And, and that's a place where Virginia hasn't won, and I believe it be 23 years now at Cameron Indoor. So a number of storylines going into that game. And, and part of it is because Virginia, if they're able to hold serve, would go in as the number two, maybe number one if Villanova loses a game along the way, maybe number one team in the country going into the house of most likely the most talented team in the country. It's going to be interesting to see what the outcome of that game will be. You can see Duke Saturday at 4 Eastern against Pitt from Cameron. Where do you have the Devils pegged given their couple of hiccups on the road. I think that they are the best team in the country at home and in neutral sites. I think they are young and inexperienced on the road and it has hurt them this year, but we've seen them, you know, in the preseason take on sturdy competition and win them all, but they just have struggled with their inexperience getting out on the road in the ACC. Another foul on the Cavaliers with a minute 14. Meanwhile, we talked about the quick turnaround, and that's tough for any team. And Josh Pastor's bunch having to play a 2 o'clock game on Saturday afternoon. And, and it doesn't get easier after that, after having to go to Donald L. Tucker Center at Florida State, then playing Clemson. That's one of the first things that Josh told us at shoot around today was, well, we got a tough stretch coming. <laughs> when we, yes, we take on Virginia, you got to play at North Carolina, you got to play at Florida State, you get a couple home games, but of course it's yeah, Syracuse and Clemson. Clemson. Yeah. You know, I mean, that, that, that's tough sledding for any team, but that's the thing about the ACC. The struggle is you have to play a quality team on every night. And you just you just can't look forward. You just got to get ready for this game and then get ready for North Carolina and forget about the rest of it. And that's what makes it the best league in the country, and that's what makes it fun for these guys, especially these coaches. And it's, it's fun hearing, you know, play, people commentate about the ACC, and they always talk about the coaches, the different style of play that goes on in the ACC and all the different challenges that you have to face playing in this league. Runner rims out, but the tip-in is good by Johnson. Or, excuse me, by a Hunter. 18 points for DeAndre. 62-46, and the Cavs have the basketball. You know, Bob, but you look at it. Under 40 seconds, Virginia still doesn't stop playing defense. Right. There's no give. That's why teams don't get to 50 points. 
because they don't give. There's never a point during the game where they say it's okay for you to have an easy basket. Nobody relaxes for the Gavs on D. Drive by Hall off the top of the glass and good. Devin Hall with an exclamation point. And the Cavaliers are going to go to 17 and 1 and 6 and 0 in the ACC. Jackson will fire and hit. With 2.9, the Cavs dribble out the last couple of seconds and they win it by 16. Tony Bennett and UBA victorious on the road. And Corey, we talked about their defense. It came as advertised. You know that expression that you quoted from Tony, defense travels. Well, we saw that here tonight. Georgia Tech got the first basket of the game. Virginia tied it to two, went ahead four to two. They led from that point on. They did. On the road. They did, and this Virginia team, of course, takes a lot of pride in this defensive effort. And they, they are intent on being the best team in the country. It's not something that these guys don't want to be. They wear that banner very well, and they take a lot of pride in coming in and holding teams to under 50 points, especially when they get this opportunity to go out and do it on the road. The Jackets fall to 10 and 8 and 3 and 2 in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Very impressive defensive effort for UVA tonight. They come to Atlanta, they win their ninth consecutive ACC game, matching Purdue for the longest in conference winning streak in the country. And they yield only 48 points. We will be back to wrap things up from Atlanta right after these messages. Over Georgia Tech tonight as the Cavs, number two in the country, go to 17 and one overall. They've now won nine consecutive games, and they are five and zero in the ACC. And for Isaiah Wilkins, a chance to play back in his home of Atlanta tonight. He finishes with nine points, five boards, had two blocks and three steals. And Isaiah Wilkins just stuffing the stat sheet in every area of the floor and making winning plays for Virginia. That's the most important part. Continues to shoot the basketball better and better each game from the outside, but his defense is consistent. And of course, as he continues to make winning plays, the Cavaliers continue to win. And Virginia, in the second half, shot 54% to end the game at 47. 18 Georgia Tech turnovers were lethal. That was the difference right there. When you look at the numbers, 16 points off of turnovers for Virginia, only two for Georgia Tech, and that's where Virginia was able to separate themselves early in the game, and of course, in the beginning of the second half, when they were able to extend the lead. The most Tech offense came from the bench. Tyler Jackson at 14, Curtis Haywood hit three threes for nine, four Cavaliers in double figures, and DeAndre Hunter had a nice game and led them in scoring with 17 tonight on the road here at Georgia Tech. We'll be back after this. Corey Alexander, Bob Rathbun. Good to see you, partner. Absolutely. See you down the road. Nice job. For highlights and must-see moments from this game and others, check out the ACC.com. Next telecast on most of these ACC network stations, Saturday at 4 Eastern, Pitt at Duke. You've been watching coverage of Atlantic Coast Conference basketball on the ACC network, an exclusive production of Raycom Sports. So long from Atlanta.